Okay, now let's look at question number 11. Question says there are two parallel wires in the plane of the paper and they are at a distance of x0 from each other. So let's say this is one wire and let's say this is the second wire and uh, both the wires are at a distance of x0 from each other. Let's say something like this. Then the question says a point charge is moving with the speed u between the wires in the same plane at a distance x1 from one of the wires. So from the left wire, let's say the point, uh, this is this is the location and the charge is in the plane. Let's say it's moving like this and the gap is, says, question says it's let's say x1 and the gap from the second wire becomes x0 minus of x1, x0 minus x1, fine. When the wire carries a current of magnitude i in the same direction, the radius of curvature of the path of the uh, point charges r1. <coughs> it's a charged particle uh, moving with a velocity u at this location, instantaneous location and question says if both the wires have current in the same direction, <coughs> then the path followed by the particle has a radius of curvature uh, r, r1, let's say. So when both the wires are uh, having current, so there would be a magnetic field at this location. Let us find out the value of magnetic field. Uh, this wire I will create magnetic field in the downward direction following the right hand rule and this wire will create magnetic field at this location in the outward direction and subtraction of uh, magnetic field lines will take place. So I am finding out magnetic field inside the plane of the board of plane of the board. Let us say uh, B1, a net magnetic field can be written as mu naught upon 2 pi I upon X1 then minus of mu naught upon 2 pi i upon x naught minus x1. <coughs> so, magnetic field in this case comes out to be mu naught upon 2 pi <coughs> i also I can take out as common that is like 1 by x1 minus of 1 by x naught minus of x1. This can be further simplified, you can take the LCM and this gives me mu naught upon 2 pi into i into <coughs> x naught minus of 2 x1 upon x1 into x naught minus x1. This is the magnetic field for this case. Now, what will happen because of this resultant magnetic field which is inside the plane of the board, uh, plane of the board forces will be acting on the particle and the particle will try to follow a circular path and the radius of curvature of the path as we all know is given by m into u divided by q into b. <coughs> that means the radius of curvature has an inverse dependency on magnetic field. Now, what will happen in the second case? Question says current in one of the wire is reversed. So, as I reverse the direction of current, magnetic field uh, at this location because of the second wire will change. And as of now, subtraction of magnetic field, subtraction of magnetic field is taking place, then the magnetic field would be added up. Hence, magnetic field in the second case would be addition of these two terms. So, if for the first case, if the radius of curvature is R1, for the second case, if the radius of curvature is R2, then can I write a relationship R1 by R2 can be written as, because R is proportional to 1 by B, can be written as B2 upon B1, where B2 is magnetic field in the second case, B1 is magnetic field in the first case. <coughs> so, in the first case, magnetic field is this. Similarly, if I calculate magnetic field for the second case, so I can write to B2 is equal to similar expression, mu naught upon 2 pi i addition of these two terms will take place. So, x0 minus x1 plus x1 will give me x0 in the numerator, x0 in the numerator upon x1 into x0 minus of x1. This would be magnetic field in the second case. <coughs> Hence, B2 by B1, value of B2 by B1 would be I'm dividing B2 by B1. Everything would get cancelled out. Here, x0 would, remain, would be remaining x0. Here, x0 minus of 2x1, x0 minus of 2x1. Now the question says x0 by x1, value of x0 by x1 is 3. The question says x0 by x1 has a value of 3 and question asks me what is the value of r1 by r2. x0 by x1 he is saying is 3. Let us divide by x1 on both the sides, numerator and denominator. So I can write this expression as x0 by x1 which is 3 divided by x0 by x1 which is 3 minus of 2 which gives me an answer of 3. Hence r1 by r2 ratio of both the radius comes out to be 3. So we get the answer 3. Now let us come to question number 12. Question 12 says, uh, during Sarley's experiment, 0 of the vernier scale lies between 3.2 into 10 power minus 2 meter to 3.25 into 10 power minus 2 meter. The question is basically talking about Sarley's method. Uh, by Sarley's method, we calculate the young modulus of a body. Young modulus is nothing but force per unit area. That means stress divided by change in length upon original length. The question says, I am using Sarley's method and then a vernier scale is being used. Vernier scale uh, in Sarley's method is basically used to calculate the change in length. So, he says he initially 20th division of the Vernier scale exactly coincides with one of the main scale division. 
and then he says an additional 2 kg load is applied to the wire then the zero of the vernier scale still lies between the same values and now 45th division of the vernier scale coincides now what is happening as you as you are giving load then the length is changing hence strain is changing so if i if i calculate young modulus using this so if i calculate what is change in length delta l so change in length delta l would be in the first case main scale reading uh, was 3.2 into 10 power minus 2 to 3.25 into 10 power minus 2 and the division was 20th division coinciding and in the second case the co coinciding division is 45th division so if you calculate what is the change in length so change in length would be because of 25 division uh, that that are getting additional hence change in length would be 25 division multiplied by the least count which is 1 into 10 to the power minus of 5 this would be the change in length in meters now <coughs> this question is of error and the question says what would be the percentage error in the uh, measurement of young modulus so for calculation of percentage error in this experiment force then area and then length are, are getting precisely measured delta l we are measuring using vernier scale hence there is an error because vernier scale has a least count so uh, because of because of error in the measurement of uh, length there would be error in the measurement of young modulus so if, if i calculate the error via this equation so i can write dy by y can be written as df by f plus da by a plus dl by l plus d delta l by delta l <coughs> force is exactly getting measured hence the hence df by f that means the fractional error in the measurement of force is zero da by a is zero dl by l is zero everything is getting measured precisely d delta l by delta l now d delta l means the uh, the error in the measurement of delta l and delta l means what is the incremental length so delta l we have already calculated it's uh, it's 25 into 10 to the minus of 5 and del and d delta l d delta l d delta l is basically the least count of the vernier scale which is 1 into 10 to the minus 5 so this is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 5 substituting these values <coughs> i can write as a dy by y is equal to d delta l which is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 5 divided by delta l which is 25 into 10 to the power of minus 5 this will give me fractional error I want to calculate percentage error hence I have to multiply by 100 on both the sides so if I multiply it by 100 on both the sides so 100 into dy by y gives me percentage error in young modulus hence this gets multiplied by 100 I cancels it out hence this gives me 4 percent so percentage error in the calculation of young modulus for this particular case comes out to be 4 percent <coughs>